Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be talking about the transitional time between late summer and fall. Generally, this is a time that is much different than the transition from winter to spring. That transition is a very visual transition. We see males coming in to shallow water, we see females coming in, we see water temperatures rising pretty quickly, and we just kind of can see what's going on. We know that it's transitioned from winter to summer and we're going to be fishing that shallow water for big fish coming into spawn. Now in the fall that transition happens a little slower and it's not a visual transition. What we do is we will be out here catching summer fish and having a good time and then all of a sudden the spots that we were catching fish in start to dwindle down. You'll notice, well geez I caught 10 fish on that point last week, I only caught 5 this week. Next week you may go out and you may not catch a fish. And I'm going to really break down one specific on. bank and I'll take you from start to finish and where I've really just seen these fish move from one point down the, down the bank to another point and then disappear. What I'll also be talking about is specific areas within the area. And let me back this up. You guys know I talk about the delta as being, uh, and this could be the delta, or it could be any lake. Um, but you have a river system or, or a lake, and that's the city. Now within that city, you have lots of little neighborhoods. And within those neighborhoods, there's lots of doors that you need to knock on to maybe find somebody home. So what we'll be talking about today is this little neighborhood that I'm fishing within this big river system. And I'll also talk specifically about little doors that I had to knock on to catch my fish. And one of the things that's important when you are transitioning from fall to summer, if you want, or excuse me, from summer to fall is finding those little doors. Because Once you find the fish in these little neighborhoods, it will extend the numbers of fish and how long you can fish in the neighborhoods because the fish in these neighborhoods don't all come in in one day and leave in one day. And there'll be fish coming in and fish leaving and, and, and more fish leaving and more fish leaving until there may be nothing in this one little neighborhood. You want to make sure you can drain that neighborhood before you have to go out and find a new neighborhood. Okay, what I've done is I've pulled off this bank in front of me. I was sitting right in there. And I want to show you this entire bank from start to finish before we pull up and start talking about specifics. There's a point, probably 100 yards down there, got little Thule point. This bank runs all the way down here. There's shallow flats. There's, um, uh, there's some drop-offs. There's a lot of vegetation, so on and so forth as we get down here. A lot of the places that we'll be talking about you can't see. And then there's the other point. So what I've done in the last three weeks is we started catching fish at that point. We followed them down little by little by little, and there are different drop-offs and things here, and I can tell you why I think the fish were moving down this way uh, through the transition. They're coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. Started getting more fish in this area, more fish down here. Pretty soon they're on the point. Now they're gone. We'll walk you through that whole scenario. Let me put the camera down and we'll move out to this point out here. Okay, I found this point first here, and the way that I found it was, I just came out on the point, it was summertime conditions, and I'm running point to point to point. This is not a spot that I normally catch a lot of fish in. It's a spot that, you know, I drive by most of the time, and most of the time I come in here, I'm disappointed. So what I did was I came to this point, and I started throwing a chatterbait. I caught a couple fish. I'm thinking, okay, now we got some fish on here. This is something I need to look at came back one evening and I threw some topwaters around these tulies and I caught a couple of nice fish. So what I did is I started really picking this apart and this is one of those doors that you knock on. This is a very visual door within this area. It's a point, it's got tulies, it's got some deep water, it's got a little ledge down here. There's just a lot of little doors to knock on in here. So I started catching fish here with chatterbaits and topwaters. What I wanted to do was move up the bank 
and down the bank just to see if there were any other fish in this neighborhood. Up the bank, up that way, I found nothing. So what I did was I started moving back behind us. Let me turn the camera around so here. So I started moving down this bank and I started finding that there were fish all up and down this bank. Now this part of the bank, because of the way the wind blows and the way the, um, the tide moves through, it's very shallow in next to the bank. So it's kind of like a big flat in here. I found my best luck in here at low light periods on top waters, uh, wake baits. Uh, so we started here and I noticed that I can go down here, especially first thing in the morning or in the evening and catch fish. Go down about 50 yards and I'll talk about the transition that I started to see happen. So I'm moving the, down the bank right now. And I'm just about 50 yards down the bank and I want you guys to look in here. There's a lot of surface vegetation and you can tell that it's very shallow. If you were to look down in the water right where I'm, you can see a lot of uh, subsurface weeds. I want to show you another thing out here. If you look right out there, there's a little log sticking up. That's a door that I was knocking on every evening and every morning and there was somebody home. That's one of the doors we need to knock on. So if the tide's up a little bit, you don't see that log. But you got to know where it is so when you come in here, you really want to concentrate on that area. Let's go down and we're going to go down about 100 yards down here and we'll look at that uh, uh, clump of uh, surface vegetation. We'll talk a little bit about that area. Okay, this is a important part of this video because there are several transitions that happen between where the boat is positioned and the next point. Now we can see a number of visual doors that we should be knocking on. Number one is that big piece of wood. That's pretty darn visual. I can't tell you how many fish I've caught off of that, uh, that post out there. You can also see the surface vegetation. This is primrose. This primrose will get down and it'll pick up roots down in the bottom. So this patch of primrose has been here for about two to three weeks. When I first got here, that was much bigger. There's fish that hold all around that thing. So that was another door that I knew I had to knock on if I wanted to maximize the number of fish that I was catching on this bank. So again, we started the point, caught some fish, we're moving down, catch a fish every now and then on the flats. We get to this spot, man, there's a point here. There's another uh, clump of vegetation down here. We've got some wood down here. This was an area that I slowed down in and really tried to maximize, again, the number of fish that I could catch and also the size of the fish. On these flats in the summertime when there's lots of bait running around here, the light level's low, they'll come onto the flats and they'll feed in the areas that we've just talked about. What you don't see is about 30 yards past that uh, log sticking up, it gets deeper right away and there's a drop off as we get down this bank and it gets deeper and it gets deeper because of the way the current comes through here and cuts a deeper bank in there there's less flats in this big moon here and it's deeper water closer to the bank as i started following the fish down this way and let's just say i was catching 20 fish a day i'd catch 15 of them between the point and that log. As they started transitioning down the bank, I caught fewer fish down at this point and I could see them moving down the bank. They were coming off the flats and they were coming to the ledge in deeper water that was closer to that hyacinth and the primrose that's, that's on the, on the uh, bank in front of us. Different doors to knock on and where to put your time in, your most time, your most productive time, when to slow down, when to speed up. Let's go, I'll get on the other side of that uh, log and I'll show you where that drop off is and we'll talk about fishing that drop off and we'll talk about fishing the rest on down into the so next we've point. we've just moved from that uh, log stick up and about uh, 20 feet behind the boat. That's where it got deeper. 
All this is deep water in here, right up next to this vegetation, all the way down to that point. Okay, what happened? Uh, about a week into fishing here, I started seeing the fish move down here, and I was catching fewer fish on the point down, down behind us, and I started catching all my fish over here. Why? Because these fish were starting a fall transition. We didn't see it. I didn't see it in the daytime. Daytime temperatures were still 70 degrees. Water temperature, 70, 80 degrees. Water temperatures were, were you know, close to 70 degrees. Everything looked the same, but the fish knew that it's time to transition. So in here, this ledge, that's another door that I knew I needed to knock on to stay on this spot and keep catching fish. So after about a week of fishing here, I didn't even fish the point. I came right up to that log and I started fishing from that log and I concentrated my time on this deep water ledge and I started picking up the same fish that were down in the flats a week earlier all up and down this ledge. Because I had deeper water, I could throw uh, chatterbaits, topwaters, worms, and um, a number of different baits that, that you know didn't get fouled up in the weeds like uh, uh, we would have uh, up in the, in, the, in the shallow flats. So we moved all the way down here catching fish for about another week. Let's get down to that point and we'll talk about what happened down there. Okay, so we've moved all the way down this bank from the far west point all the way out to the far east point. We're still in the same neighborhood but you've seen lots of different doors that we've had to knock on and as i followed these fish down from one point to this point this is the last spot that i was able to catch fish after i wore this spot out i haven't been able to find where those fish went but let's talk about before we talk about the transition let's talk about what happened down here and some of the doors that we had to knock on so over in here a big flat. You can see surface vegetation here as the tide goes down that'll become all weeded up. Found nice fish in there with frogs and uh, uh, topwater baits when I can get in there. Along this little half moon here there's a nice little bowl out off of that tule berm and you know out from uh, the surface vegetation i was picking them up on chatter baits uh, wake baits in the evening bringing them right down the edge i would move out to the point and i would flip worms in around those tules i would catch fish in there there's a couple more doors right over here these tule uh, 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 tule uh, pockets that are out from the shore here i'd pick up fish around those with worms and it was a lot of fun that happened lasted maybe about a week front to back I'll say two to three weeks I fished this bank on and off catching fish with everything transitioning down this way to the end of the bank now the last week these fish pulled off of here not catching any fish here now where they went I don't know did they go over to that rock bank and start moving up or down the bank? No, nah, I fished that. They're not there. I uh, fished, you know, everything close by. Uh, are these fish still here and they're just not biting? Did they go out to deeper water? Did they run around the point and just move down to the next uh, uh, island? I don't know. But you can see the transition that I've been through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull back in to uh, get out of the wind and I'll talk about the baits and um, we'll kind of review what's going on here and I'll, I'll sit down and we'll talk about transitional baits. We'll start with top water. Summertime, most of us are throwing fast moving baits and we're looking for reaction bites. We're throwing frogs, we're throwing buzz baits, we're throwing whopper ploppers, fast moving baits. This time of year, I slow down and I start to use um, baits like poppers, bubble walkers. I, I mean, I use poppers and bubble walkers 
through the summer also. But I, this time of year, I'm putting down my faster moving baits and I'm starting to just stick with those poppers and, and slower moving baits, along with keeping my big wake baits on. And also, if I have some floating jerk baits that I can twitch and just let them, you know, move along like a dying uh, bait fish on the surface, I'll go into those type of baits. And by the way, fall, you can catch some big fish on big uh, wake baits. You're not going to catch a lot of fish, but for the guys that like fishing them and you're willing to put in your time, you're not only going to catch some big uh, uh, largemouth, but you'll catch some big stripers on them too. So uh, what I will do is um, eventually as that water drops below about 60, I'll just wean myself completely off of top waters. And already I've weaned myself off of frogs because in my book, the fish have left the shallows and they're in deeper water. If I find a mat that's out in deeper water that I, the only thing I could throw right now is a frog, maybe I'll, I'll throw a cast or two just to see if I can get that. But frogs are on the back shelf. So we're done with top water. Uh, I am done with chatter baits, and I know a lot of guys will throw these year round, but I replace my chatter baits with jerk baits. Uh, another thing that I'll replace them with is um, I had a fluke here. I'll replace a chatter bait with a fluke. I'll replace a chatter bait with small A rigs, and as the winter comes on, I will increase the size of these A rigs, bigger baits, and so on and so forth. Right now, there's a lot of small. Um, small forage fish in the system so I'm using fairly small uh, A rigs but those will continue to get bigger and bigger. Scrounger heads um, work well. Also um, Kitex with underspins, overspins. I had one here a minute ago I was fooling around with I can't uh, find but uh, those all, all work. All of them work. Uh, I'll also I'm not a big crankbait guy, but I'll move from like square bills to like Spro Little Johns uh, and I'll keep them in shad color, bait color. I'll kind of get away from the crawdad colors. As soon as the water temperature starts to really cool off, those crawdads are going to burrow down and the fish will still eat them if they find them. But the, uh, the bluegill and the crawdads kind of, uh, kind of you know, uh, go into a dormant stage during the um, summer months, or excuse me, during the winter months. I'll also continue fishing my my uh, worms uh, sink will work year round. I'll start throwing, uh, doing a lot of uh, tubes, kinky beavers, um, not actually punching, but just pitching into around tules, uh, in troughs, around uh, uh, any wood. A lot of the fish during the winter time will, will uh, come into the, the areas that have uh, wood logs, docks, things like that. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Uh, yeah, I mean that, you know, that's just, everybody has their own transitional baits. That'll give you an idea of how I kind of look at it, but you have to be open-minded. I try to go from, uh, when I make decisions out here, I make big, bold decisions. I'll go from a fluke to a great big bait if I'm trying to, you know, get a reaction bite off of a, a, a bait fish uh, kind of bait, a bait fish imitating bait. Uh, if I'm going from Worms, I might go from a, like a Ned worm to a six or seven, eight inch worm. Now during the winter months when the water gets really cold, I really drop down the size of my worms. Colors, I don't go from like a margarita mutilator to a morning dawn. I'll go from a margarita mutilator to a, I'll just say a gray blue back worm, something that's gonna look like a dying bait fish or something, something totally different. So when I'm covering when I'm covering uh, baits, I don't try to go incrementally bigger, bigger, bigger. I go from very small to very big. I go from, if I'm doing colors, it's bright to drab, so on and so forth. Uh, man, we could talk about this for, for many, many months, but that's kind of uh, my primer for you guys when it comes to uh, fishing this transition area. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know this was a tough video for me. I'm doing, I'm out here by myself. I'm holding the camera. The wind's blowing me. I got boats going by. I got airplanes that I got to stop for. Um, you guys don't want to hear that. Anyhow, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys on the river. Make sure you send me reports for the uh, the weekly In Deep on the Delta report. And uh, let me know what you guys are doing. Hopefully, you'll have a good transitional period. We'll catch a lot of fish here. We'll get into the winter time, and maybe we'll start catching some stripers. See you guys on the water. <laughs>